What is up Dub Club members, it's your boy Johnny and today what I got for you is the best legends for the Apex Legend Arena game mode. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be reviewing a Dot .esports article from Pedro Perez about the actual best legends he thinks that you should be using in the Apex Arena game mode and I'm going to be giving my thoughts about it and then I'm going to be whittling it down to the top 3 best legends that you should be picking when you next play Arena. But before we get into it guys, if you are brand new around here and you enjoy Apex Legend content such as this, then be sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on that post notification bell that way you never miss out on another video I'm going to be pumping out a lot more Apex Legend Legacy content over the next few weeks especially around the new arena mode to help you get better so if you do have any ideas of what you want to see then be sure to drop them in the comments and with that being said let's get right into it okay so as you can see we are now on the dot esports article big shout out to pedro perez man you're the absolute og for doing this i really appreciate it and obviously thank you for giving me this idea as well really do appreciate it my guy but anyway let's have a look at his opinion on who are the best legends to use in apex's new mode so the first one he's highlighted is valkyrie he states that valkyrie isn't just a nuclear on the block she's also a great addition to any squad her mobility grants her access to pretty much any elevated position in the maps and her vtol jets can serve a short dash to move behind cover or to flank enemies. Her tactical is a versatile offensive tool that can be used to open combat and stun opponents as a zoning tool to pull enemies out of cover. Valkyrie's ultimate has very little room to shine in Apex arenas but it can be used as a scanning tool to pinpoint the enemy squad if you're desperate though it is probably not a situation that will take place every round which is I do very much agree with that I mean a lot of people's ultimates or a lot of legends ultimates aren't really that necessary when you play Apex arena mode I'm obviously going to get into who they are as well and which ones are actually beneficial but Valkyrie is a really big shout obviously because it means that you have to hook up people or you have to fly up into the air and stuff like that and it's not really worth it to be fair because obviously it could cost quite a lot obviously regarding crafting metals so yeah i really just think obviously using a tactical and stocking up on the tactical is probably a really good shout and like he says as well the vtol jets as well very very good passive thing to have and obviously get that aerial ground as well so you can pinpoint where enemies are next one he's mentioned as well is revenant which is apex's murderous simulcrum he can use his tactical to shut down enemy abilities for 20 seconds and if done right that's more than enough to win a fight Revenant Silence denies any escape abilities such as Wraith's Into the Void or Loba's Translocator. His Death Totem is another strong tool in Apex Arenas. Teams can use it to push, focus fire on an enemy and turn to the fight in a 3 versus 2. That's very, very true. Obviously, he does have a pretty good ultimate. I'm not going to lie to you. Obviously, you know, I don't really play Revenant that much, so I can't really have that much of an opinion on Revenant's ultimate. But every single time I have used a Death Totem or if I have contributed and taken the Death Totem when having a Revenant on my squad then it is a very good essential thing to have and it does allow you to pick off damage take away a load of enemies and obviously knock down somebody before they knock you back and send you back to the death totem next one we're going to move on to is loba which is the legacy's buff and it actually has been very very kind to loba she can now move at full speed while her bracelet is in the air and is no longer slowed after the landing which would make her a very strong character by itself but that's not all that she has in stock loba's ultimate the black market boutique let's play as pluck i Items from the care packages or supply bins where they're putting themselves into danger. It's also a very inexpensive ultimate and a very short cooldown, which makes Loba a very perfect legend to stocking up your allies. That is a very, very good thing as well. If you do have a Loba on your team, that is a very good essential thing to have. Obviously, when you're on a map such as like Party Crasher or something like that, it is a very, very difficult thing to do because you have to push to the left or the right hand side. And if you are playing with a decent team or you're going against a decent enemy team, they will most likely push towards those supply bins or into the middle and obviously it is not really a good place to be especially because on the left hand side where all like the greenery and the water is and the lake like it is okay for cover but then on the right hand side it's literally just open so you can get yourself into a bit of trouble so obviously if you do have a loba or if you do like playing loba it is seriously recommended to go and use her ultimate if you want to be that team player next one is going to be bloodhound the technological tracker is a very good addition to any squad their passive shows context clues that can lead straight to the enemy squad and their scan is an insanely powerful tool to alert the rest of the allies to the enemy's positions. Their ultimate also comes in very handy thanks to its enemy highlighting and increased movement speed. Their Bloodhounds tactical may must be used carefully though, however, since it has a long cooldown and a very single charge. 
Players should even buy extra uses of Bloodhounds Tactical, which does cost materials, but it is well worth it. I do agree with that as well, to, to be honest. Obviously, I feel like you should be using the ultimate on the final round to get that match point and secure a flawless victory. However, obviously, if you are just playing, obviously, round one, round two, or it's like a 2-2, two -two, let's say, and you're trying to get the match point between each other, then I do recommend just using your Bloodhound Tactical just to ping enemies. Very easy, very, very quick as well. Obviously, there is a little bit of a cooldown time, which is a little bit of an issue, but that's obviously the nerf that respawn have obviously given bloodhound in previous seasons but he all in all though he is still a very very good player to use you can easily ping enemies in the middle of the map or right at the beginning as well to allow your teammates to find out where the enemies are and they can get into position and start picking them off Next one's going to be Gibraltar. Accidents do happen sometimes, and that's why you take the Makoa Gibraltar into the fight. He is a tanky character with a gun shield, a passive that reduces incoming damage by 15%, and a dome shield that he can drop and block all incoming damages. Gibraltar's shield can offer a quick res, slow down a fight, or force an enemy push. Lifeline can also play a very similar role to him, but there is a few differences. Obviously, her revive doesn't require charges, but it doesn't provide cover either, not after the legacy buff, which actually did take away her shield. And the combat medic can also play a very similar role to Gibraltar, even though she is far more fragile than Gibraltar. So, I feel like Gibraltar is a lot more of a defensive character that you can use when you go into the arena mode. So, if you are more of a passive player rather than an aggressive player, so you let the enemies go for you and you start counteracting their moves probably Gibraltar is a really really good way for you but to be honest with you you don't really go quite passive when you play in Apex Arena mode or that's in my opinion really like I like to just get straight into the fight and just write down people and just kill them all, all as soon as possible and get the games over and done with but let me know in the comment section down below do you think Gibby is a really good addition and do you are you a passive player as well let me know down below next one I'm going to move on to now is Wraith Wraith's portal isn't as useful in arenas as it is in the battle royale counterpart but that's not why most people play her. Her tactical into the void has a strong escape that it has in its room regardless of mode. Her passive can also help spot when enemies are targeting you or an ally. Now, obviously, I do really do agree with this statement, to be honest, because I have used it into a void many times in order to actually rotate and go behind enemies and actually pick off enemies from behind them. And it's actually quite funny, to be fair, because obviously at the beginning of the game, if you are obviously new to the game, there is a lot of like noobs that come in there. And for people like myself who have been playing Apex for quite a while now. We know these little tactics and we know these little uh, like 200 IQ moves if you want to call them and our movements. So we're able to flank people and some people don't actually even notice. So it is a really, really good thing to have if you are more of an aggressive player. Rafe is going to be an insane good choice for you. Next one's going to be Speedy Boy himself, Octane. The increased stim cost means that Octane players can't be as liberal with his tactical as before, but the increased movement speed and his jump pad let him reposition very, very quickly. He's not as ubiquitous as the battle royale mode but he can still get an edge in combat i do agree with this to be honest i think the jump pad isn't really that essential unless you are trying to go for a full aggro team and you know that team isn't going to be able to bite back in the combat so if you are playing let's say against a noob team then this is going to be a very very good legend to pick but obviously i feel like just using the stim and just using the stims as many times as possible to actually rotate and get into certain positions quicker than the enemy enemy team then I think that's really probably the most valuable thing you can do with Octane. Like, his jump pad is good, don't get me wrong, but as it says in the article as well, which I do fully agree with with Octane, it isn't really that essential. Next one is Horizon. Now, the nerf to Dr. Summers made her much less oppressive, but she is still viable in arenas. Her tactical is perfect for reaching the high ground, particularly in maps like Artillery or Gardens, and her ultimate can push an entire squad if they are huddled too close. Very, very true on this. I'll be honest, her tactical is very, very good for high ground. I've actually done it on party crasher and it is very very good i've actually stayed on top of like the little grass reef on the left hand side of the map like where all the lake is a really really good spot as well obviously i've had a horizon she dropped a tactical i've been able to pick off enemies in the air and especially in the middle of the map as well next one is rampart rampart is hit or miss in the battle royale mode but she gains a little more room to shine in arenas a good rampart will get valuable uptime for her ant walls to boost damage for herself and her allies and can set up a strong defensive position if the enemy team doesn't have grenades that is. Other defensive legends such as Caustic or Watson can also work well in arenas providing that they adapt to the playstyle but Rampart's amp walls can just provide value by just being on the map. 
I do agree with that, I'll be honest. I don't use Rampart that much, but I have been on the receiving end many, many times with the Ant Walls, and they do actually give off a lot of damage, like especially on the receiving end. So, obviously, she can play a massive big role on that, but that is more like it says in the article for more passive players. So, obviously, a Gibby and a Rampart, they are going to be a very good duo together, and you could potentially have the one or two Bloodhounds there in order to ping off enemies, if that helps. So, that would probably be a good free piece to have. So, now that we've seen the reviews, here are my top three legends that you should be choosing when you next get into the arena game mode. The first one is going to be Valkyrie. She is the new one on the block but I seriously would not actually underestimate her. Her ability and her passive work so well on the party crusher map and is a really good way to force enemies to get out of the main center building on the map. Her ultimate like many other legends aren't really beneficial on arena but her passive and her tactical will do the job just fine. The second one I'm going to be recommending is my main Wraith. Yep I do switch between Octane and Wraith as mains but trust me, I am always going to be a Wraith main, especially on arena mode. Her ultimate, again, isn't really a big help on the arena game mode, but her tactical into the void plays such a massive role in rotation. Like I said before, I have played her many times on arena and especially on party crash and artillery. I've been able to rotate without players actually knowing what's going on. Truly is insane. And I, regardless of the amount of nerfs that she has received during the time she's been on this game, I believe that she is still such an insane character to choose. And finally, the third one is going to be Bloodhound. Like, what's so special about Bloodhound is that his passive, his tactical, and his ultimate work amazing on arena. His passive monitors the step of the enemies, the tactical pings the enemies, and the ultimate is the cherry on top of the cake and lets you see enemies in a red saturation. Other legends such as Octane are very good honorable mentions, like I said before, but if you are a player that does a mix of both passive and aggressive like myself, then Bloodhound will be a lot more beneficial to you. And with that being said, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more Apex Legend content such as this, then be sure to subscribe subscribe don't forget to turn on that post notification bell that way you never miss out on another video and guys my name's been johnny you guys have been amazing and if no one's already told you have an amazing day take care and peace